Staples to steal Bob. Please come back like you belong. Lucy? Ah! Lucy! Oh! Bye, Dad, me, Dad, Benjamin. Please come back like you belong. Mm. I woke up this morning. Ah! Lucy was not in sight. Yeah! CBS Sunday after 60 minutes. Miss Ball, they're calling for everyone on set, Miss Ball. Where is Mr. Arnez? Is he on the set? Mr. Arnez, Miss Ball wants to know if you're on the set yet. Of course I'm not. I'm in here trying to hold this company together. Tell her to get her fat ass to work. Miss Ball, Mr. Arnez says he'll join you on the set presently. You tell him to put down the daiquiri shaker and pretend to be sober for an hour. Sarnes, Miss Ball said she I know what the hell she said. Rotten bitch. Lousy drunk. Bill. What? I just wanted to say, we've had our disagreements over the years. You mean we hated each other's guts? Yes, that's right, we hated each other's guts. But in the end, I just wanted to say, Thanks, and good luck. You don't mean that. No, I don't. Uh, Lucy, dear, did you get those line changes for the third scene? Yes, I did. They're fine. They're good. Yeah, well, have a good show, sweetheart. Yeah. You too. Yeah. God, it's worse than we thought. They're being civil to each other. This really is the end. I want to thank you all for coming tonight. This is an historic night. The last Lucy Desi comedy hour. Oh. Believe me, we all wish it could be otherwise. We wish we could go on forever. Hey now, stop that. I'm paying for that expensive makeup you're ruining. For the last time. Yes, boss. In the role of Ethel Mertz, the lovely and talented Vivian Vance. Thank you, Belle. Playing Fred Mertz, Mr. William Frawley. Bill Frawley, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Bill. And finally, the vice president of Desilu Studios. I am the president. <laughs> the mother of my children and my favorite redhead, playing Lucy Ricardo, my wife, Lucille Ball. Thank you all so much. <laughs>
slow down a little? Two cheese, one double mayo, onions both. What's the matter, Lucille? Can't keep the pace? Only if I eat half of them myself. I'll put some meat on those bones here. Uh, why don't you take a break? Oh, good. Thanks, Uncle George. I know how it can cool those spuds off. Johnny! I know a better way. and can't watch you every minute doesn't mean you can run wild. Are you so starved for attention that you have to ride naked through town on some boy's fender? I wasn't naked, and it wasn't... If you want to be an actress or a singer, that's fine by me. I'm all for it. But no daughter of mine is going to be a stripper. Did you know Johnny DeVita's family runs booze down from Canada? That's just a rumor. The copper just confirmed it. Really? You think it's fun to be dating a 25-year-old hoodlum? He is fun. And unless we cross the state line, there's nothing you can do about it. Really? We'll see. me much, do they? <laughs> Mama don't. But there's nothing they can do to break us up. Nothing. Good night. if you really want to. Oh, I want to. How can you afford this, Mama? Oh, don't you worry about that. You're a natural-born actress. You just need a little schooling. And this is the best place for it. These are your assignments. On Friday, each of you will perform the lines assigned to you with feeling understanding and force if you please hi there oh, excuse me i'm lucille ball i believe you're in my class with mr anderson right i believe so yes well what's your name there betty davis oh hello betty um 
Anderson gave me this to recite, but I don't get it. I don't even know what it is. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. It's Macbeth, Act Five. Oh, you've read the play, of course. Uh, no. And I haven't got the time before Friday either, so, uh, would you be a pal, Betty? Tell me, what does it mean? What does it mean? Just what it says. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Girls here are so mean, Mama. Nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. I don't understand half of what anybody says. And I'm so homesick. Honey, it's natural to be homesick. But you've got to grit your teeth and stick with it. You've got the moxie. I know you do. You just have to buckle down and do your best. I'll try. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, or no man ever loved. Excellent, as always, Miss Davis. Miss Ball. But a passing shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, <laughs> full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Indeed. Miss Ball, I have had the opportunity to watch you strut and fret upon the stage. In my opinion, there's no future for you there. I have written to your mother. I'm returning your tuition and sending you home. Thank you. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> I'm so happy to be home, Mama. Those New Yorkers wouldn't know talent if it swam up and bit him in the bagel. Do you think I still have a chance? Honey, you're a natural. Those classes are for girls who will never have half the talent you were born with. Now get some sleep. You heard what happened to Johnny? No. His father was killed. Shot down outside church, gangland killing. Johnny's somewhere up in Canada, they say. Poor guy. Yeah, well, you dance with the devil. I did. It was fun. Hey, did you see this? Please, officer, I've never been arrested before. I'm so confused. So you're saying, if I tell you what I know about Marcy and Joe, I could just go home? That's right. And you'll forget about all of this? It never happened. Now, what do you say? I'd say... Nuts to you, copper. What kind of a rat do you think I am? I'll do ten years before I turn on Joe. <laughs> Miss Ball gave one of the most impressive portrayals of the evening. She played the part. Hey, Frank Buck, impressive actresses are trying to read their reviews up here. Hey, sis, look at my birthday present. Daddy Fred, is it okay if Joanna takes a shot? Yes, 
She's careful. Go on. She played the part of the experienced underworld girl with much greater realism. Took it all. What do you mean? What does he mean? The boy is permanently crippled. His parents' lawsuit has taken every dime we have. And the court has declared us bankrupt. That's not fair. It was an accident. Daddy was there. They hold him responsible. Why can't we fight back? Is it always going to be like this? Just when things are going good, something comes along and ruins everything? It's not fair. You're tall enough, and you've got good legs. If we change the hair and makeup, you might just make a Carnegie model. What the hell? Houdini couldn't get out of this thing. Oh. Of course, if Houdini wanted to help me get out of it, that'd be something else again. <laughs> Don't you know this is what your maid gets paid to do? Remind me to fire her. I've got a live one Friday night. That's better than a dead one. He's got a friend. How ugly. I hear he looks a little like Houdini. <laughs> they feeding us? Mm-hmm. You sure don't eat like a model. We're all jealous of Lucille. She can eat and eat and stay bone thin. I wouldn't say bone thin. I like her look. You, darling, can keep talking about me. The rest of you, shut up. <laughs> you girls ever done outdoor ads? No. I'm not sure I want my figure on the roof of a taxi cab. Honey, it's been on the floor of a taxi. Why not the roof? <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible thing to say. Aww. It was a limousine. <laughs> <laughs> 
I only mention it because our agency just landed the Chesterfield account. We'll be picking the Chesterfield girl from now on. Oh, really? Excuse me, aren't you the cigarette girl? <laughs> That's right, Lucille Ball. That poster in you is great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Sylvia Harlow. I'm an agent. Sorry, I haven't heard of you. Well, have you heard of Sam Goldwyn? Can you believe it? They had 12 girls picked already, but one of them's mama said she couldn't go. Oh, you're going to be a Goldwyn girl. That's amazing. What do they pay? About three times as much as I'm making here. Oh. Of course, it's only for six weeks, and you know what they say about Hollywood. It's a million to one shot. Then why are you going? I like the odds. Oh. All right, girls, line up by number. One, two, three, and so on. Now, first, you'll meet Eddie Cantor, who's directing and starring in Roman Scandals. And then, the press. Miss Ball, Lucille Ball. I think you've contracted something. Uh, no, sir, not yet. A contract is what I hope you'll give me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you two girls up next to the column up here, please. Just back here. Right, thank you. One on the step. Next to the column and on the bed, please. please. Uh, you cross over here for your entrance. Okay, this is the scene. I bend down just as he decides to sling the mud. Where's that uh, girl? You know, uh, what's her name? Parts. Little, but they stand out, you know? And I'm saving my money, Mama. You're all gonna come out here and live with me. I promise. Ah, so this turns that, which makes that go down. That's right. Huh. Pretty damn clever. Miss Ball, Miss Ball, make up now. Oops, sorry, boys. Gotta go. That's your third oops this week. At least they remember my name. That's not how you want them to remember your name. And these are not the guys who matter. Who are the guys that matter? It's called the talent committee. One here at RKO, same deal at Metro. In fact, all the studios. And once a month, the studio head meets with the VPs of talent and publicity. And they decide who's climbing and who's slipping. Lucille Ball. She's a newcomer. Oh, yeah. Easy to look at. Great legs. Game two. Always ready to take a pie. Nobody remembers a face covered in pie. Directors like her. I say we give the kid a break. Cast her in small roles in big pictures. See what happens. We're not talking huge dollars here. All right. We'll keep her. Oh, you are just going to love it here. Wait till you see the house. Is this your car, Lucy Ball? It belongs to a friend. He let me borrow it to pick you up in style. Boyfriend? I don't date boys anymore, Mama. <laughs> this is it. Real orange trees in the backyard and not a snow shovel in sight. Well, what do you think? This must be costing you an awful lot. I'll start looking for a job tomorrow. Mama, your working days are over. Well, let's go take a look at this Taj Mahal. thing, Freddie. A real home. Ever endeavor? 
Ever and ever. I'm not depending on anybody else anymore. I'm gonna make this work. This family's gonna walk in the front door, fat and sassy, and sit at table number one. I lay claim to this town. It's mine. I just don't know it yet. Top director works with Shirley Temple. Has a beautiful farm outside town. Raises turkeys. So, think you're going to stay with him? <laughs> At least till Thanksgiving. <laughs> Alex, darling, where are we off to? The garden. We're meeting George and Carol. Who? George Raft and Carol Lombard. I need to talk to George. Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard! That's her name. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Carol Lombard! I love Carol Lombard! She's my favorite star! I knew there was a reason I'd go out with you. That's all I can say. That's all I can remember. Finally, he says... Perhaps we should try this with you, standing up. <laughs> Wait till I tell Clark this story. You know Clark Gable? I sure do. You're real funny, you know that? I got a big mouth is all. Not a quality they like in their movie stars. You working steady, though? Steady in the bees. The studios and their talentless. Screw them. I've got a big mouth on me, too. Mouth on her like a horny sailor, somebody said. You're beautiful. Honey, tits up. Now, funny is forever. Oh, I love this. What is it? It's that Cuban thing. The rumba. Come on. The two of us? Why the hell not? Wait, stop. What's wrong with Paul? What are those? Birds. Oh, I can't have them near me. I don't like birds. Well, what if I uh, put on a smock? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> I like roses. <laughs> Better? Mm. I'm sorry. I, I still know they're under there. Quiet, please. And action. I'm Ed Sedgwick. I watched you working today, and I just wanted to say you've got a natural talent. I can see that. You may need a little tutoring. Please, call me. I know quite a bit about it. Yeah, okay. Ladies? Tutoring. Is that what they're calling it these days? I guess so. How many dirty old men can there be? You kidding? They got their own union. <laughs> I don't see why you have to go to all that expense. I don't want you to be my maid. But having a servant in the house makes me uncomfortable. I'm working long hours to wrangle this family into luxury. You'll just have to grin and bear it. And I don't want any ruling class, serving class claptrap out of you. Now, your highness. <laughs> my mother was a maid for Mr. Jack Benny's wife. She taught me most of what I need to know. Is this what you wanted to do, Harriet? Be a maid? No. I was a dancer for years. I worked all those clubs up on Central. But it's... 
Well, nobody's making the all-Negro review of 1939. No, I guess not. But I know the life, Miss Ball. I know makeup and hair. And there's not a stage door Johnny I can't handle. I believe that. I'd like you to start tomorrow. I've got the day off, but on Wednesday, I have a big fight scene with Maureen O'Hara. Oh, boy. I'd pay to watch that. You know, Harriet, that's not a bad idea. You look like a two-dollar whore with a mean pimp. <laughs> How much do we make for the... Who is that? I don't know. Well, go find out. That man's too good-looking to ignore. He's too good-looking to be anything but trouble. Of course I looked at you. He did not. He walked right by, nose in the air like some damn aristocrat. Oh, I am an aristocrat. Oh. And I prove you wrong. You had on a green dress. Your hair was a mess. <laughs> and you had a black eye. That's one. Ah, hmm? uh, Daisy, you were looking. Yeah, that's Desi. You just don't understand Latin men. We see more in one hot little glance than most men see in a lifetime. What did you see? Something I wanted. Excuse me, Miss Arnaz. The manager wanted to know if he could send something over to your table with his compliments. <laughs> Tell him, uh, yes, thank you very much. They never send me anything. Being the latest sex symbol has its advantages. Oh, no, 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 no. It's terrible. All these girls all the time following me, sending their maids to find out my name. <laughs> Desi. Desi. Desiderio Alberto Arnaz Ideacha, the third. The third? Ah, I told you, I'm an aristocrat. My father was mayor of Santiago. That's a major city in Cuba. You're serious? We're an old, proud family. I had horses, boats, cars, everything. Till I was 16. Then what happened? Then the rebels came. Now we got out just in time with nothing but a chihuahua dog. Mi casa. Mi casa. That's all my mother could say. And she still says it sometimes in her sleep. You're still close to your mother? No. So am I. <laughs> Not so different, then. Please, Mr. Arnaz. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> oh. Hold this, please. Rinse get in the way. <laughs> I see that look in your eye. What look? That riding on the fender through town look. 
You're hooked on this boy. It's just a date. He's at RKO, I'm at RKO. It's a Hollywood thing. Mm. Even I don't believe that. He's so young. Men aren't serious about anything at age 23. So, who wants serious? You do. Deep down, and you know it. I just don't want you to make the same foolish mistakes that I did. some bad news. You found somebody else. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. Why would you say such a thing? I'm sorry. I'm just such a pessimist when it comes to happiness. It never seems to last. Um, uh, Lucy, please, I just... Why don't you call me? Lucy? Is that all right? No one calls me that. Except my Grandpa Fred sometimes calls me Lucy Ball. Hmm. I like it. You call me Lucy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lucy. My agent has booked me into a New York nightclub. I'll be gone for the next three months. Three months? That's a lifetime. I'll write to you every day. I promise. You better. <laughs> we didn't really think he would. Write every day? I'm going to call him. Oh, no, you're not. Is this Desi Ernest's room? Yes, who's this? Lucille Ball. Oye, Desi, hay una mujer para ti en el teléfono. ¿Quién es? Lucille Ball. Oye, baja la música ahí, por favor, chica. Lucy? Who is that? Uh, I don't know her name. You don't know her name? She's auditioning or adding some dancers to the show. Uh, What's your name, honey? Bettina. Uh, Bettina. You're screwing her. I am not. I'm dancing with her. Listen, I don't know what actresses have to do to get jobs, but dancers have to dance. That's a mean thing to say. You started it. I did. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I miss you so awful. Not so easy to forget, huh? This is driving me crazy. We have to talk. We are talking. It's not what I mean. All right, girls, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Lucy? Lucy, what are you doing here? Mm. Oh, Lucy. How you, Daffy? Oh, uh, Lucy. <clears throat> uh, this is Bettina. Hi. I'm sorry, honey. You're always gonna have girls throwing themselves at you. I hope so. <laughs> but seriously, honey, jealousy is a hungry emotion. It will eat you alive. I got bites all over. You know what they're saying about us in Hollywood? Hmm. That we're a ridiculous couple. We are. That it's amazing that we've lasted this long. Two months? It's a miracle. That it'll burn out in a month or two. Most likely. I've got it. You owe me this. Oh, no. oh, hello. Oh, hello, Miss Ball. What? 
Well, who did we marry? Marry? <laughs> you didn't really. Oh, baby. Well, forget what I said before. I'm so happy for you. This is Walter Winchell, back from commercial with the showbiz news. RKO contract players Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz have gotten themselves married overnight in a romantic world. Good luck to them both. Let's see. Mm. Let's see, I'm thirsty. Mm. Give me some water, will you? Mm. Mm. What's the matter? Listen, you. Next time you want a glass of water, get up and get it yourself. your new ranchito. Yeah, very pleasant. Oh, well, yeah, we love it. You know, five acres, swimming pool, and all the orange juice you can drink, huh? <laughs> so what about you two? No, what about you two? I want to hear all about it. Are you happy? <laughs> He's twice as sweet on the inside. Oh. <laughs> right there, you want to build a barbecue. Cuban style. Big enough for a whole roast pig. Mm -hmm. Ah, Clark, may I please introduce you to my mother, Lolita de Acha? Mother, this is Clark Gable. I'm most honored, ma'am. I too. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go look after the spaghetti sauce. Hmm? I hear Desi's quite a cook. Did he learn that from you, Mrs. Arnaz? Oh, no, 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 not from me. No, I did no cooking at home when Desi Terio was young. We had cooks. I see. Most Cuban men, they know how to cook one or two dishes. It is uh, a necessary skill among the young gentlemen, like music or poetry, riding. Charming the ladies. <laughs> I think in this, you are almost Cuban yourself, Mr. Gable. You flatter me, ma'am. It's been cooking for six hours. It's ready. Not yet. You're going to burn the bottom right out of that pot. Go on, Lucille. Tell the story. <laughs> well, my agent calls Selznick and gets me an audition. So I'm driving over there in my convertible, top down, scarlet off to 12 Oaks, <laughs> when all of a sudden, two blocks from the studio, out of the clear blue sky, a big raindrop hits me splat right between the eyes and it starts to pour <laughs> so i arrive at selznick's office looking like a drowned cat <laughs> luckily his secretary takes pity on me she sits me down by his fireplace to dry off with a big glass of brandy oh. so i'm kneeling there and drying out and drinking the brandy and reading the script and drinking the brandy and then all of a sudden there he is mr selznock Nick. i'm the one i'm your scarlet and i start why ashley wilkes i do declare is there anyone more dashing and exciting Phil Dee Dee to Melanie. Phil Dee Dee. <laughs> he 
he's just staring at me in total disbelief. And finally he says, Miss Ball, why don't we try it with you standing up? <laughs> Get up. <laughs> well, a lot of girls auditioned for Scarlet on their knees. <laughs> I was one of them. Hey, everybody, the Cuban spaghetti is finally ready. Hey, there's a song in here. The Cuban spaghetti is finally ready. Thank God I'm starving. <laughs> oh! I told you. Harriet, when's the last time you vacuumed this carpet? This afternoon, Miss Lombard. Clean enough for show, folk. What? Oh! oh. oh. No. Carol. Oh, my God. Oh, Carol. Oh. No, you're not going to. Oh. Oh. This is a secret. This is a secret to a Cuban Well, next time when I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah? If I put it on the floor, it's okay. You need to get rid of the dirty. Yeah. So, me, ma. You talked to Mr. Gable for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fine gentleman. Very knowledgeable in the world. Oh, what do you think of Lucy's mom? Oh, and her grandpa Fred. Isn't he a riot? <laughs> They're good people. I, I don't worry about them. Uh, who do you worry about? Lucy? Oh, she doesn't have much elegance, does she, Desiderio? And not much uh, class. She's done 25 pictures here at RKO, and the public still doesn't know who she is. Why don't you give her the lead in that Damon Runyon thing? I mean, she's kind of a Runyon character already. You mean she talks tough and falls for the wrong kind of guy? Yeah. What about Arnez? His contract's coming up, too. Louis Mayer said Arnez is like a racehorse. Worthless until he starts to run. Or in Desi's case, starts to drum. If Louis likes him, Louis can have him. To me, he's just another Mexican. So we don't renew? No. <laughs> I have to be out there in circulation. I don't have a big fat contract at RKO like I used to. Like some people still do. I am now, Mr. Ball. He was just a kid. Uh, you love it when this kind of thing happens. I do not. I'm not Mr. Ball. I will not be Mr. Ball. Oh, grow up. Hell, if the kid had called you Mr. Balls, you'd have given him a 20 buck tip. You got a big mouth on you. You're just now finding that out? Oh, esta mujer, ¿qué voy a hacer con ella? From Hollywood, America is at war, and Hollywood is a big part of the home front. 
Some stores are campaigning to sell vital war bonds. Others are taking off fancy film costumes to put on plain army green. Good luck to them. Where they're going, there are no stunt doubles to do the dangerous work. Nice move. There's no point in waiting for him. He's not coming home. How can you be so sure? Last night he was out with that new blonde at Universal. Night before he was at the Grove, drunk, banging the drum in some brunette. Honey, how do you know all of this? People talk. They're happy to tell me. There's a conga line of guys who want in my pants. But you wouldn't. Who says I wouldn't? I know you. You want this marriage to work. You start cheating too? Just shows you lost hope. Hope. and drunks have figured out where we live. I had to throw in a bottle last night to keep him quiet. Here it is. Not a drop gone. Am I supposed to be impressed by your willpower? No. I don't like this brand. <laughs> Just like sex, eh? You turn your nose up at the house brand. I like the house brand. It's my favorite. Yeah, but who eats your chocolate when there's peppermint and tutti frutti? Lots of people. Married men, have you heard of them? They make a vow to stay with chocolate, and they damn well stay with chocolate. If you think most married men... No, you're not turning this into some life magazine. This is about you screwing around on me, and it's going to stop. And I'm gonna stop? Who do you say you marry, huh? Lucy Ball from upstate nowhere. I'm a man. My father had a mistress who had her own house and kids by him. A wife, a mistress, and more. That's your excuse? Because your daddy did it long ago on some spick island? Right, Lucy. I'll tell you why you do it. It's because you're not in the movies anymore. Because you're back to banging the drum for a living. Because some kid called you Mr. Ball. Because it makes you feel like a big Cuban man if you can poke something strange. This... It's the way I am. I work hard. I play hard. I drink hard. And I love hard. And I know you like that. I can't remember. Lucy. Lucy, please come back. Okay, what about you? Good night, sweet dreams. Tomorrow's another day. Till then, sweet dreams, sweetheart. Good night, slip tight. I'll see you along the way in dreams, sweet dreams, sweetheart. May angels up above watch over you and keep you safe, my love, until the dawn breaks through. Good night, sweet dreams. Tomorrow's another day. Good night, sweet dreams. Oh. Sweet
<laughs> All these years I wasted on sexy heaps and banging the drum. <laughs> When all it takes is a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Promise me you'll stay safe. No, mi amor. The army is sending me out to conduct bands. Where I'm going, all the Japanese are locked up. And all the Germans are cameramen. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, a trombone can poke out an eye. What's Clark going to do? He's not sure. He doesn't want to spend the war making movies. Desi's on that Hollywood war bond caravan. Oh, yeah. I hear they're doing real well. A million dollars a city. Go on, say it. What? Everybody's talking about it. That caravan train is a rolling bordello. Everybody's screwing everybody. And Desi's working overtime, but hey, it's wartime. All rules are off, right? I'm sorry, sweetie. God help me. I'm getting to the point where I don't mind so much if he keeps it private. But a whole train full. Excuse me, Miss Lombard. Miss Ball, we just wanted to say goodbye. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Good luck to you. You always had time for us working stiffs and kept us laughing. We're gonna miss you, sure. Oh, I'll stop by the shop before I go. Yeah, they like that. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. They love you here. Everybody except the top dogs. Critics raved about Big Street. About three people paid to see it, so it's my fault and I'm gone. Uh, gone to MGM. That ain't shabby. More stars than there are in heaven. Yeah, if I can't become a star at MGM, then I don't know. That always seems so out of reach, you know? Like the carrot they hang in front of the jackass, which is me. <laughs> Come on now. Sometimes I think being an actress isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. So do I. No, you don't. You? Sure. We all do. We're all worried somebody's gonna come along and take it all away. Listen, when this wraps, I'm flying to Indiana for a war bond thing. But when I get back, I am taking you out for the longest drunkenest lunch on record. Okay? <laughs> You're on. <laughs> Lucille, we made you some lunch when you feel like it? Come out, honey. Everyone, uh, say hello to Lucille Ball. Hello, Lucille. Hi. Hi. Hello. You're one of the MGM family now, Lucille. We're living at the dawn of the Technicolor age, Lucille, and we're going to make you the brightest star in it. Are you going to make me beautiful or cut me up for steaks? <laughs> <laughs> Do the best you can. Uh -huh. This is the girl's last shot. I'll try. <laughs>
Scout, Lucille. <laughs> Red Skelton. Red, what a thrill to be working with you. I've got so much to learn. Well, let's get started. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> This is going to be fun. <laughs> Try a few bounces. Oh. Hey, I'm pretty good at this, huh? <laughs> oh. <We're out. laughs> oh! Okay, I'm the cat, you're the mouse. Here oh. we go. Whoa! <laughs> oh! <no. laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm pretty good. I said I can do it too. Ah! <laughs> Sam GM will be reporting a profit this year. What? Oh, I get it, because they dumped all the red ink on me. <laughs> Dee Dee says you're not feeling too good. Oh, I'm fine. She worries too much. So do you, Lucy Ball. I've got reasons. Believe me, I've got reasons. Uh, I'm talking about Cuban Pete. He hasn't been home for weeks. Well, he's in the Army. Are you defending him, Daddy? Not at all. I hate the way he treats you. It's, it's, it's just that... We... It's okay. It's not the Army. His unit hardly ever leaves California. He was in Riverside last week, one hour's drive, and he never bothered to come home. He sends these long, apologetic telegrams and says how much he loves me, but... But he just can't leave the girls alone. Says it's part of his Cuban soul and he's never gonna change. <laughs> I thought this was something special, Daddy. One of those destiny things. Two people who just had to be together. Maybe if I'd had a baby, we'd be a family, but... We have it, and I can't hold on to him. <laughs> oh, I'm so unhappy. <laughs> I gotta do something or go crazy. <laughs> Let me share an attorney's view of your situation. You'll have to testify, but you should have no difficulty demonstrating his infidelity. No difficulty. And you're living apart now. That's good. This will enable us to get you a provisional decree of divorce. Once he signs it, it will be permanent. But there are things you must not do that will invalidate the decree. You cannot be in business together or buy anything together. That's not a problem. And you cannot sleep with him. Forgive me.
I always liked the old man. And my father was a stuffed shirt. <laughs> but Fred was a real thin. Everybody else died or ran away, but not him. He was my father. What can I do for you? Tell me why I'm like this. You feel sad. Because somebody you love has died. It's more than that. I felt this way when Grandma Hunt died and Aunt Lola died. So hopeless and dark. Like the earth just opens up and I fall into my own grave. That's how I feel. <laughs> it doesn't go away. I have it with me every day. Not every day. Every day I feel this doom. I do a good job of hiding it, but this is the real me underneath. Lost. Well, you're not lost when I'm with you. When you're with me? When's that? Jesse. I want so much to have children. <laughs> it's something I dream about. Something I never had. A real family. And I don't mean a family Cuban style. With one wife on the books and the other on the sly. Now, Lucy, I want the same things. I promise I'll change if you will. But you get rid of this doom curse, and I'll become the perfect American style husband. Oh, I've missed this. She's got talent. She was damn good in Dubarry. Yeah, people like her, but she's not the reason they're buying the ticket. So? She's not a draw. She adds value to a picture. She's 35. People want to see actors younger than them. If we turn her out, her career is over. Hey, not everyone makes it. Okay, let's hear it. What? You're wearing your agent with bad news face. I can guess. Since Metro cut me loose, nobody else wants me. No, that's not right, Lucille. There's a part of got you up for at Columbia with Red. Don, my shot at being a major star is over. You know, I don't care. The more I have to choose, the more I choose this. Home. I can be an also ran if I have this to run home to. And Desi. I think he really wants to make this marriage work. Except he's gone so much. If Desi and I could do something together. How about TV? That would put the last nail in my coffin. Any movie actor who does TV's blackballed. Hey, the studios are going to have to wake up about TV. It's coming, it's going to be huge, and nobody can stop it. What? <laughs> Keep a secret? Of course. I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. Lucille, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's going to be huge, and nobody can stop it. <laughs> Fred, where are we going? We call it the Boar's Nest. It's where we go to hide from Studio Brass. <laughs> Lucille Ball, say hello to Buster Keaton. Wow, what a pleasure, Mr. Keaton. Nice to meet you, Lucille. I used to watch your movies back when I was a kid. Uh, that was when I was a whole lot thinner. <laughs> And you met Ed Sedgwick. Just once, you were wrestling a giant squid. You probably thought it was coming onto you. I'm sorry, I think I did. Let me turn this thing off. 
What is that? Oh, the writers had the sound department make these records, so it sounds like they're all in their offices working hard. Oh. Well, in reality, they're all down at Bordner's drinking time. <laughs> so, Lucille. MGM lets you go. Yes. I've got a new agent now, Don Sharp. I know Don. Very forward-looking. He's got me set up to do a radio show, the kind of newlywed comedy. It'll keep the wolf from the door, but I'm gonna miss the big screen in the studio. Wrong. Getting fired from MGM, best thing could have happened to you. Louis B. Mayer never understood. Understood what? Us. Red. Me. You. Clowns. And now, another fairy tale from our beloved sponsor, Jell-O. <laughs> Go on, dear. Talk to the nice people. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating grape jello all day. When along came a spider, ugh, and sat down beside her, and Little Miss Muffet said, Hey, get your own. My mommy made this for me. J E L L O, the gelatin dessert. Buster is just amazing. The first thing he says is you have to decide that you're a clown and devote yourself to it. Well, I'm not so sure I say you were a clown. You know, I think I am. All my life, I never understood what the director meant half the time. I always thought it was me just not being smart enough, but Red says he's the same way. Until he can get in front of a mirror all by himself, he doesn't have any idea what he's going to do. Well, Don Sharp called again, you know. I don't have a problem with TV, Lucy. I, mean, I think it could be a good new direction. For me, anyway. I'm working behind the scenes a little more. And... I don't know. Okay, let me put it to you another way. I need this. For me. I'm not a conga-banging kid anymore. <laughs> you still look good to me. I know I can produce a show like this. I just need a chance. You can give us a chance. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Desi, I'd like you to meet Bob Carroll, Jr. and Madeline Pugh. They are the best two writers on the radio show. It's a pleasure. Uh, please have a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. So, uh, why don't you tell us what kind of show you see? Well, really, the uh, radio show's a good model. Uh, a married couple. We love each other. We have fights, but we always make up. Fight about what? Well, what do you two fight about? <laughs> <laughs> Status. <laughs> you mean like if Lucille was a star and Desi wanted to be? Yes. No, better the other way. He's the star and I'm always messing things up. <laughs> oh. Lucille. You, you guys keep talking. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go lie down. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> so. What kind of star? Mm, how about a band leader like Dizzy? No, no, I don't know. Yes, yes. You being band leader is perfect. It brings music into the show, and it's glamour and nightclubs and... Dizzy? Dizzy, I need you. The script done, it's excellent. Wink and slapstick nicely blended. 
Now it's Lucille feeling. She's fine. Uh, a little gloomy after the miscarriage, but uh, she's bouncing back. So, uh, when do we start? Well, I'll be honest with you, Don. I personally have no problem with Arnaz, but the network's position is that he's, well, he's just too ethnic. They're all asking, why would an all-American girl like Lucille Ball marry such a guy? <laughs> Except for sex, which we can't talk about. Well, it's not just sex, huh? They are really in love. If you could see them at home, around the pool, they are just your average husband and wife. Husbands on this network don't wear frilly sleeves, shake their hips, and bang a jungle drum. I'll make a note. No frilly sleeves. <laughs> but seriously, Hub, don't say no yet. Let me convince you, huh? No. No, Lucille. You're playing the part of the audience. I'm doing what? But the audience knows it's awful. But to the clown, this is the most beautiful music she has ever made. That's it. for you. Remember, see it, react, then act. See it, react, then act. In a nutshell, CBS doesn't think the marriage works. Don, I'll tell the truth. It's because I'm Cuban. <laughs> but if we can demonstrate that the show is irresistibly funny... Funny trumps everything. It's the 11th commandment. Bob, Madeline, do you think you could work up a few routines for Lucille and Desi that would work on stage and work on TV, too? Of course. Friends, we're gonna bring back Fawdville. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah! I'm Desi Ernest. What can I do for you? Oh, I want to be in a band. Oh, you're a musician. I am? Oh, I am, I am, yeah. First of all, you have to show me your credentials. <gasps> do you have any experience? Listen, Professor, tell me something. Do you play that thin? How's that? I said, do you play that thin? What thin? <laughs> that remind me of fun of my English. That's English. <laughs> do you do you play that instrument? Where? There. Oh! Where? I'll tell you what we do. We'll give you an audition. No. Sure. Now? Right now. Oh, you my. You play something. We'll listen to you. Oh, oh All right. help me out here. We can. Sure, I'll help you.
Okay, Professor. We'll take it off of you. On the downbeat. Whenever you're ready. There's a little snag in the negotiations. CBS is insisting we do the show from New York. Why? Everybody lives out here. It's about broadcast quality. They want the show to go live in the East, not on Kinescope. I don't want to leave our home after we've worked so hard on it. Well, that's what I told them. Okay. I'll fix it. Don tells me you're becoming a real savvy bargainer. I'm proud of you, Daffy. Dizzy. Kisses. Bye. So, how's our girl? She's good. And, uh, she doesn't want to move. So, how about... What if I said, screw the kinescope. Suppose I can deliver broadcast quality film to you on time every week. How are you going to do that? We shoot directly on film. Cut film, ship film, east, west, see the same things on the same night, same quality. It takes a movie crew three times longer to film a scene. That's just a fact of life. So, we'll use three cameras at once. I'll shoot master, close-up, and whatever, all at the same time. It's never been done. Yeah, uh, some quiz shows have tried it. Not on film, and never for anything that requires comedic timing. And I want to shoot it with a live audience. <laughs> Where are you going to find a soundstage with space enough for an audience? I don't know. Well, we'll build it if we have to. One thing I learned from the vaudeville act, Lucy needs real people to play to. Do you know what you're doing? About half the time. CBS uses TV crews, not movie crews. You'll have union problems. And no matter how you slice it, it's gonna cost more. We'll make up the difference. Our company will. Desi Lu will. <laughs> the only way this will work is if Desi Lu actually produces the shows. Okay. Desi. But that means Desi Lu gets to keep the negatives. We own them. <laughs> sure. You want a whole bunch of film and all that storage cost? You can have it. Well, I was just witness to something. It was either genius or suicide. Oh, we're still brilliant, aren't we? <laughs> you are going to need a producer. Oh, Lucy and I... I'm going to be too busy. I'm going to get you a top guy. What about the neighbors, Fred and Ethel? Well, we should make them a little older. And maybe be the Ricardo's landlords. I mean, what do you think, Jess? Yes, that's good. Well, the Mertz is... They still love each other, but they're not lovey dovey anymore. And, and Fred, uh, well, maybe Fred used to be in show business, so he and Ricky have more in common. It works. Desi, they told me you had a few ideas about casting. Yeah, there's uh, an actress in a play in San Diego people say we should look at, uh, Vivian Vance. I don't know her. And there's a character actor I like for Fred, Bill Frawley. Isn't he a little old? Isn't he a little, uh... Uh, that's one of the things I'm going to find out. Uh, excuse me a minute. I need to check on Lucy. Uh, we're so overdue. It makes me nervous. So, Jess? You're right. I'm impressed. He's very good at this. I told you. your daughter. Look at her. Look at her. She's all right. Are you all right? I 
I there? I'm daddy. Who are you? Everybody's fine. The baby is so beautiful. You can't imagine. I love this baby. And I love Lucy. <laughs> Morning. How are you both? Fine, thanks. Yes. Lucille. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce Vivian Vance, who'll be playing Ethel. You know Bill Frawley playing her husband, Fred. Miss Ball, it's an honor to meet you, and an absolute thrill to be working with you. You're pretty. You're too damn pretty. I thought Ethel was supposed to be dumpy. And don't worry. I photographed dumpy. And that's the first time you ever heard an actress admit that. I don't know what the problem is. She looks plenty dumpy to me. And you look old enough to be my grandfather instead of my husband. <laughs> Good. Well, I see we're settling into character already. Of course, you all know our director, Mark Daniels. Hi. You want to take him for a test drive, Mark? Well, let me just put my crash helmet on. Shall we? Lucy is standing, stirring the pot while reading the book. Ethel enters, but Lucy does not hear her. Ethel places a hand on Lucy's shoulder. Lucy screams. Eek! Gosh, did I scare you? Oh, no. I was getting ready to scream and throw the book out the window. Anyway... I'm sorry, I just wanted to... Okay, ball... just, just hold it just a moment. Lucille, uh, I think that book-throwing line wants a little more twist, yeah? Okay. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, listen, Mark, I know what you mean. I know what you want. But it's good to talk about this now, first day, because I've never been good in rehearsal used to bother the hell out of me, but in recent years, I found that a lot of comedians aren't good in rehearsal because we have to figure this stuff out on our own. Well, that, that's just fine, Lucille, but it has to be there before we shoot. Don't worry. It will be. Target is hard to hit. When he comes through that door, I'm gonna say, Okay, Ricky, okay. What seems to be the trouble between us? Okay, Ricky, okay. What seems to be the trouble between us? Okay, Ricky, okay. What seems to be the trouble between us? And as her husband, Fred, Bill Frawley. William Frawley, ladies and gentlemen. Fred Mertz. And in the role of Lucy Ricardo, my wife, the mother of my child, the wonderful Lucille Ball. Thank you, sweetie. Hi, Mama. Good morning. The most exciting time last night? I learned how. What's that you're reading? Lucy? Ah! Gosh, did I scare you? Oh no. I was getting ready to scream and throw the book out the window anyway. Baby, we threw the dice, we win big, or we crap out. 200 people like it. All we need is a few million more. Two. It won't take that long. 
on. Seth! <laughs> Hello, friends. <clears throat> Friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. I'm your Vitamina Vegemin girl. Do you poop out at parties? Do you poop? Do you poop out at parties? Do you poop out at parties? Are you unpopular? The answer to all your problems is in this little bottle. Is in this little bottle. All you do is take a big tablespoonful after every meal. It's so tasty, too. So tasty, too. Tasty, too. <laughs> Tastes just like candy. Tastes just like candy. <clears throat> Ah, that's Vitamita Vegemin. I sure hope this bread turns off. It took all morning. I had to go to three or four shops to get enough yeast. Why? How much did you need? Thirteen cakes. Thirteen <laughs> cakes? That seems like an awful lot. Well, here's the recipe right here. Let me see. Lucy. What? Three cakes. Oh, really? Oh, well, they're small. Won't make much difference. I guess you're right. Hey, you smell bread? Maybe it's done. How did this oven door get open? <laughs> Talk about an overnight sensation. There's a new sweetheart in America, and her name is Lucy Ricardo. The whole nation now comes to a halt on Monday nights to watch the new hit on CBS. Stores close early, and the cops tell us that the crime rate drops off during the Red Hat's half hour of inspired hilarity. Even the bad guys are saying, I love Lucy. Okay. <laughs> Take a look. She's right down there. Is this your beauty? You really did buy a boat? Ah, we can afford it. Besides, I'm Cuban. My blood is half salt water. And the other half's rum? Oh, come on, don't start picking a fight now. Oh, be happy for us. Uh, we're Jatsmen. <laughs> yeah, well, you go be one of those. I have a baby at home. Yeah. You spent so much time with her. Okay. Down to the business of eating chocolate. Oh, this looks great. Yeah. Oh, oh, good, good job, guys. All right. 30 in the morning. Yeah, 10.30. Start the belt, guys. Start the belt. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, we're ready. All right. Nice and neat. Now, the object of the game. Yep. We can't let any of them go past this or we're fired. All right. Beat it up, guys. Beat, Beat it, it up. up. There we go. Oh, oh this. Oh. Okay, now, oh, 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 and, oh, 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 We've got to try and complicate things a bit. Guys, can we talk to you a minute? Believe it or not, I'm pregnant. Middle of next season, I'll be as big as Jackie Gleason. Well, that's, <laughs> uh, that's great news. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I, I know this screws things up for us a little bit. Why should it screw things up? Well, Jess, the network won't even let us sleep in the same bed. Well, screw the network. This is great. This is real life. This is exactly what I was looking for. We're going to have this baby on the air. On the air. Tastefully. Tastefully? What the hell does that mean? She'll wear appropriate clothes. 
Hardly any symptoms. Cravings for funny food only. Oh, for God's sake, Jess, they're going to explode upstairs. They were nervous about even being married to the guy. Now, the implication here... It's not an implication, Hub. It's a child. A little human being. They already have one in reality. This is not reality. This is television. Ethel hasn't bothered him. Hey, here. everybody. Say hello to Reverend Moore, Monsignor Devlin, and Rabbi Wolf. I know a joke that starts like that. Oh, this means they'll let us do it? We'll write for Lucy the way she is. And our three friends here will make sure it's an acceptable pregnancy. I mean, expectancy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't this wonderful? Listen to this. Dear Mr. Ricardo, my husband and I are going to have a blessed event. I just found out about it today, and I haven't told him yet. I heard you sing a number called, We're Having a Baby, My Baby and Me. If you will sing it for us now, it will be my way of breaking the news to him. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Of course I'll do it for you, sure. Um, I... uh, wait a minute. I've got a wonderful idea. Why don't we bring the couple up here, and I'll sing it right to them, eh? Come on, let's bring them up on the floor. Come on, folks. Who is it? Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. No. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. No. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby, cradle and all. Rock a bye, baby, on the. Hi, honey. On the treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle will fall. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Honey, 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 no. Really? Yeah. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Jan. Are you kidding? No. It's me! I'm gonna be a father. How about that? I want you to meet my mother. I mean, my wife. My wife. Sing the lady song. What? Sing the lady song. We're having a baby. in that carriage how proud I will be we're having a baby my baby and me Too much at the track. I wouldn't have you dumped me out of it. <laughs> Bye, honey. See you Sunday. Oh, don't forget to put that chicken into marinade Sunday afternoon. I will. Unless I call to say I have fish. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Buenas noches, señoritas. He's so happy since he got that boat. We had three boats in Cuba. His father and my father, they both loved to fish. Always we had the fresh dorado. I don't know what you call it in this country. Dorado. See you next time for the next show. Good night, Lolita.
She thinks Desi cares about putting fish on the table. He only bought that boat to get away from me. That's a pretty cynical thing to say. I'm just being a realist. Well, reality isn't so bad. Don't tell her that. She doesn't want to hear it. But it's true. You're a success. You've got the babies and the family you've always wanted. And now I'm just waiting. Waiting for what? For somebody to die. For some neighbor kid to get shot. For something to happen. Just when you think things are the way you've always wanted them. Something happens to take it all away. Every day I wait for the hammer that's going to come along and smash it all. Now listen to me. You've got to learn to take it easy on yourself. There won't be a hammer this time. There's always a hammer. <laughs> ah, gotcha. <laughs> She's asleep. What are you doing? Bird patrol. Oh, she hates birds, you know. Pictures of birds. Oh, I know. I know why. Why? She was three years old when her father died. And on that day, a bird flew into the house. And we just couldn't get that thing to leave tried everything. And it stayed for two days, just flapping around, screeching. And I never found out who, but somebody told her that it was death flying around the house. That poor little girl. Hello? Lucille, wake up, baby. Mm. The studio called. They said you had to listen to Winchell. And at the top of the showbiz news. She's a redhead with a top TV show in the country. But is there more red than meets the eye? Investigators for the House and American Activities Committee are investigating. Like I said, there's always a hammer. Ms. Ball, I direct your attention to the voter registration card with your signature on it for 1936. And can you read the line where it says party affiliation? It says communist party. So for the 1938 elections, you registered as a communist? May I explain this, Congressman? Please do. My grandfather... Fred Hunt, who has now passed away, was like a father to my brother and me. He was a politically active socialist all his life. He insisted we register as communists, and we did so only to please him. That's exactly right. We just did it to make him happy. At the time, it wasn't such a big deal. It was almost as bad to be a Republican in those days. So why didn't you change it later when it did become a big deal? I forgot all about it. So did I. I've never voted communist. I'm really not political at all. Ms. Ball, Mr. Arnez would like to see you as soon as possible in his office. Tell Mr. Arnez I'll come when I have the time. Yes, ma'am. Tell her to come right now. Tell her I've got Khrushchev on the phone for her. Mr. Arnez, I can't... Tell her! That's not funny. Sending a kid with that message. Really? I thought it was. <laughs> Everything seems funny when you're loaded. You know, I just figured out why you never made it as an actress. It's because you can't understand anybody else's feelings. Now, what is Lucy feeling? Hmm? What is Lucy doing? 
What does Lucy see in the mirror? That's <laughs> all that matters to you. But you don't see all the time I spent to make this show work. Hey, I'm the one running the studio. I'm the one battling the network, sucking up to the sponsors. I'm the one calling in favors to make sure this red scare goes away. What? The congressman, he's going to announce that you were just young and foolish when you signed that card. Well, that's the truth. That was the truth for dozens of other guys. They got blacklisted anyway. They are not as stars with husbands who can pull strings. Thank you. Mm. Done. Not that me yet. It's what the press says and what the public believes. That's what matters. And we won't know about that until after tonight's show. Oh, I dread tonight. Having the audience turn against me like I'm their enemy. That's what I had to look forward to. Wait a minute. Sit down. And not that you would pay any attention to it, but this company is at a crucial point. The studios have discovered TV now, and we have to get bigger, fast, or we're going to get swallowed up. How are we going to do that? Our KO is for sale. We'd buy a studio? Yes. I've looked at the numbers. It's a good deal. But... But? Would mean more work. A lot more work for me. More time in the office, more pressure, which is... Which is turning you into someone I don't know. Or... We can... Sell out now, Lucy. Walk away at the top. We'd have enough money for the rest of our lives. We just wouldn't be players. What do you say? Let's see what happens tonight. Now, there's one person left to introduce, but before I bring her out, I just want to say something. You may have read in the paper that some people are saying Lucy is not loyal to this country. I want to reassure you that that is as far from the truth as it can be. Lucy and I may be different in a lot of ways, but not in this. We hate communism, and for real reasons. Communists destroyed my home and my family when I was a boy in Cuba. I came to this country without a cent in my pocket. From cleaning canary cages in Miami to this stage here tonight, this is what America means to me. No other country in the world is so kind, so generous, so fair. I love this country. And so does Lucy. And anyone who doesn't is no friend to us. star of our show, the vice president of Desilu Studios, and folks, let me tell you, the only thing I read about her is her hair. <laughs> and even that's not completely natural. <laughs> Lucille Ball. I'm not ready to give this up, are you?
to remember a skinny refugee from the Goldwyn girls trying to make it in B pictures. Well, guess what? She now owns this studio. How about that? <laughs> oh, Ethel, I, I just know Ricky won't like it. Well, he may not like it at first, but he'll get used to it. You've just got to get up the courage to tell him you really want to do this. Okay. Ricky, go on. Ricky, there's something I want to ask you. Ricky? Ricky, are you listening to me? Oh, hell, he's passed out. Okay, take ten while we throw some water over the head of the studio. Did you hear what Mark said? Desi's starting to lose the respect of the whole crew. Lucille, listen. What, Viv? I've been wanting to tell you this for a couple of weeks now, but... And this isn't the right time either. But Paul and I were in Palm Springs a few weeks ago, and Desi was there. I know. He bought a house down there. We didn't see him at the house. He was in the casino. He was roaring drunk and gambling. Gambling like a fool, Paul said. I don't know much about it, but... Paul plays a little, and he said... How much did he lose? I don't know. But it had to be thousands. Thousands? What the hell is going on with him? Why is he so determined to ruin himself? I don't know. I don't understand him anymore. I heard you're looking at a house in town. Next to Jack Benny's, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm 
just thinking back to when my wife and I bought our place. How hard it was to scrape that down payment together and then not lose it. And what do you mean? I was a pretty big gambler back then. Way out of control. Thought about taking that nest egg money to Vegas day and night. Almost did more than once. The seduction was so strong. But it wasn't too strong. You beat it. Oh, I beat it. Ultimately, because I wanted other things more. I see. Mm. <laughs> now I get it. This is what the night was all about. Hmm? Bring Big Daddy over to talk to the lost little Cuban. Save him from his gambling. Hmm? Save him from himself. <laughs> oh, what do you mean, Ed? What do you mean? Don't be such a damn idiot. You don't talk to me that way. I treat me like one of those, those children. Now you don't! Ah! You son of a bitch! Lucille Ball in Desi Arnaz's studio, Desi Lou, is on a run, adding mate room for Daddy and our Miss Brooks to a stable of shows. Lucy and Desi have lived on a ranch in the San Fernando Valley for years, but now it's a Beverly Hills address for them and their two kids. Good luck to America's favorite couple. If the reports of a wandering Desi are true, they're going to need it. Yeah, that goes right over there for the time being. The lamp beside it. Mama's so big. I love my room. Oh, I'm glad, honey. And you, Desi, do you like your room? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad, honey. <laughs> Dee Dee. Well, this is some pile of bricks. Even Senora Lolita will be impressed. There's one thing I do know how to do make a home. Didn't learn that from me. <laughs> You're hoping this will settle him down, aren't you? Oh, Harriet, good. Uh, there's some. What is it? The answer is yes. I do love you. Now I have to read about it in the papers. Spent 20 minutes with a prostitute, then gave her away to a male relative. Who is that, my brother Freddy? A real man should have as many girls as he has hair on his head. That's supposed to be a direct quote. Uh, who would say such a stupid thing? It's all made up, Lucy, to sell papers. Uh, to them, I'm just a target. You make yourself a very easy target. Sunday morning at our new house, I'm having a neighborhood housewarming party. I want you there. I'll carry you across the threshold.
you know, Mommy and Daddy are not getting along. And we don't want to make you unhappy along with us. Does that mean you're getting a divorce? Well, what does that mean to you? The word divorce. It's when all the kids cry and wish things were back the old way. That's right. Because it's very sad when our mommy and daddy can't live together anymore. But you can, Daddy. Can't you take it all back? Oh, honey, I wish we could. But we can't. Let me share an attorney's view of your situation. It won't be as simple this time. Now you jointly own the most successful TV studio in town. Simple or not, it has to be done. This marriage can't go on. Mr. Arnez? Yes, I agree. Wow, good seat. Are we lucky or what? The last Lucy show, we got in. Finally, the vice president of Desilu Studios, I am the president, <laughs> the mother of my children and my favorite redhead, playing Lucy Ricardo, my wife, Lucille Ball. Special guest stars, Ernie Kovacs and Edie Adams. I can only give you love that lasts forever and the promise to be near each time you call. And the only heart I own for you. That's all, that's all. Honest, honey, I was only trying to help. <laughs> well, you should wear like that more often. <laughs> Look, Lucy, uh, from now on, you can help me by not trying to help me. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for trying. <clears throat> That tickles. I know. Cut. Damn it.
Miss Ball? Ask Mr. Arnaz to wait. I want to walk out with him. Yes, ma'am. It's been one hell of a conga line, Daisy. Daffy. Maybe a little bit lower, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 